Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer and I'm going to be your instructor on this course. Now I've been involved in the uh, information technology sector since the very early 80s. I've worked on a lot of different platforms and devices starting with mainframes with uh, systems programming, moving on into the world of the enterprise with Novell networks, Microsoft networks, working with Microsoft networks from uh, Windows NT4 all the way through the 2008. Uh, a lot of that dealing with security issues with uh, coming up with uh, policies about access and ways to harden your servers. I worked in the network infrastructure and the routing and switching with large corporations like Juniper and Cisco. Also working with their security devices through the uh, use of firewalls, through DPAC inspection, intrusion detection systems, uh, in monitoring systems to uh, determine or look for signs of, uh, of attacks and vulnerabilities. Uh, I've worked in the world of uh, ethical hacking, doing a lot of uh, jobs in penetration testing and understanding uh, the purpose of audits. And through the use of uh, my consulting and working with a lot of different companies, including almost every major internet service provider around the world, I've had the opportunity to see a lot of different security programs, a lot of ways in which uh, these uh, policies and procedures and standards have been created. And I hope to be able to use that experience to share with you uh, what it takes to have a good security management program. Now this domain is entitled the Information Security Governance. And the goal of the domain is to give us an overview of what it takes to uh, go from the very beginning, the initial planning statements, uh, the actual development of a security governance program, through its implementation, its management, and uh, meeting your objectives that need to be in alignment with the actual business objectives. You'll see uh, as a reoccurring theme through much of this course that the goal of security governance still has to be able to keep the business doing what makes it profitable. So business objectives are also going to be a key factor. Now remember that we're giving you an, uh, kind of an overview of what is involved in the uh, field of security governance with uh, some insights of what we would be looking for and what uh, pitfalls you might come across while creating this program and making sure that it's as thorough uh, of a program as we can make. We're going to talk about information security governance as an overview, kind of getting that nice big picture. Now, when we think about what information is, we can define it as data that is endowed with meaning and purpose. And I love these fancy phrases, uh, but really that's what it is. We are seeing more and more of our businesses relying on the data that they store. In fact, data, or if we want to think of it as information, has become a very important uh, part of all of our lives. It's almost an indispensable component of doing actual business. You know, in the transferring of funds, in the transferring of uh, products, of uh, you know, it, flying an airplane. If uh, today we no longer seem to have that third person that was uh, designed to, with a charting course and making sure you got to where you needed to, that's all coming through as uh, business related. Now, for some companies, the information might actually be their business. You know, if you take Google or eBay, Microsoft, and many other companies, uh, you think about it, what they are producing is the storage and availability of information whether it's through searching websites for looking for products to buy from other people uh, in the auction capability or your operating systems and other supporting software. Now all of the information today is really nothing more than blocks of information that are stored on hard drives or solid state drives but they are just a bunch of ones and zeros and as I said the information we see today has become very pervasive in society and business we have people today that are probably talking to people around the world more frequently than their neighbors. Uh, certainly with the businesses as far as the information, trade secrets, copyrights, uh, information about their customers, uh, the financials, all being stored electronically. In fact, the dependence of information is higher today than it's ever been. Just recently there was a story about an airline that had a, a small power outage to their network systems grounding hundreds of flights because apparently they didn't know how to uh, manually board people onto the airplane and check them off a list that they presented their ticket or boarding pass and couldn't get the uh, computers working to get the flights um, or I guess basically the flight plans filed or created. So really the dependence of information is just as something we haven't seen at least in my lifetime. I remember starting up uh, as a young kid going into a bank and having a ledger statement that they filled out and at some point it was reconciled um, you know, knowing that if I made a deposit in one branch, then it might be until next week when that deposit is available for me at a different branch that they actually know about it. So it really is, uh, it's really good the way in which information works for us today, but our dependence on it is very uh, crucial. Now, 
you could think of it as information being a resource that's now equal in, import, in the importance of your traditional land, labor, and capital. Many companies, like I mentioned Google as an example, is a business that everybody utilizes. Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people utilize. But it really, outside of where the people who work at the company, has no brick and mortar type of uh, face uh, front, no building or branch that you walk into. So uh, really, that's uh, kind of giving you an idea of how important information is in all of our lives, in all of our enterprises. Now, the Gartner Group has estimated that organizations are going to deal with more than 30 times the information than they do today, and that's going to be in the next decade. Now, if you consider the uh, glaring vulnerabilities and the perpetual crisis mode activities, uh, this might not be as reassuring as it sounds when you already think about how dependent we are on information and how vulnerable a lot of information can be and how we have to respond to any breaches of our security. You can ma imagine that it sounds very scary. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, you know, what would happen with uh, GPS going down if somebody interrupted the communications. I mean, granted, that just uh, affects me because I travel a lot. I'd have to go back to the old days of finding a map and figuring out where I was. Uh, you know, and that's just one little itty-bitty piece of this entire process of saying, wow, it's just crazy, right? Financially, uh, my bank loses customer records. That's going to affect me no matter where I am. So uh, that's a part of why information security governance is very important to us. We have to be able to find a way to reduce these types of risks. Now, our goal then is to gain adequate protection for our information resources. And the issue should be raised regarding the critical governance functions that help us uh, oversee this as a program to help us get to those objectives, which is our security program. Now, until recently, the major focus in security has been trying to protect IT systems that store the information rather than the information itself. Now, I know that sounds kind of unusual, but uh, right now, if you think about having a storage area network that's, uh, or a mainframe that's consisting of all of your database of information, we've been trying to protect that system, right? We try to protect that system in uh, having redundancy in hard drives, redundancy in power supplies, backup power supplies, uh, backup uh, means of, uh, of uh, power grids, um, you know, protecting that system, uh, and of course, the information that we have on it. But, you know, that information is, uh, you know, really um, kind of the resting point. We still have to worry about the protection of the communications path, of the integrity of the data that is being entered in itself, if it's even correct information. Uh, and I, we just kind of go on and on and on. But um, that just means that our focus at one point was really just on the storage. Now, information security is going to take a larger view than just even the content, the information or the knowledge that's based on it. Now we have to start looking at uh, protecting the information in all of the states of it being processed. Again, that's from the gathering of the information, the entering of information, the transmission of information, as well as the storage. Now, there are enormous benefits of information, uh, and uh, also uh, with that we see new risks, as well as uh, sometimes a confusing patchwork of existing laws and regulation that we have to uh, deal with in trying to work with our information. Now, the information security governance is really going to start off as a responsibility of the board of directors and executive management. In the long run, they are the ones who are liable for the information or the loss of the information, and we consider them to be the owners of the information. In order for you to have an effective security governance, you have to have their support. We call that the process of having support from the top down. It needs to be an integral and transparent part of your enterprise governance. Now, your information, as we said, has a lot of meanings. Another way of describing it is data endowed with meaning and purpose. We've said that. Now, others have stated that knowledge has become sometimes the sole factor for productivity, sidelining both capital and labor. And it goes without saying that knowledge uh, is becoming one of the most important assets that if you didn't have it, the ability to conduct business would be impossible. You couldn't do it. Uh, think about uh, online uh, companies that are booksellers. They have to have uh, a lot of different information knowledge exchanges. Uh, you know, just for you to have a single transaction, you have to be able to uh, have connectivity with your bank to uh, show that you have available funds. There has to be a transfer of, that, of those funds electronically to the uh, seller's bank. They have to communicate with the inventory, with shipping, uh, you know, with ordering replacements after they ship these uh, products out to you. And all of that is just on a single transaction. 
That just means that uh, without uh, this kind of information, uh, without the ability for these communications, they just wouldn't be able to do any type of business at all. Now that we see that there are a lot of legal and regulatory requirements uh, and good information security governance is simply going to be a way of called doing good business. Now the benefits of good management can include a lot of uh, positive uh, aspects. Number one, we can plan for any increase of civil or legal liability. Now what does that mean? Well, you know, I think about uh, recently uh, one of these uh, uh, companies that uh, have uh, games that kids play and they uh, hooked up to the TV, the game consoles, and they're doing a lot of online uh, uh, type of playing. And all of their uh, customer information was stolen. Uh, from what I understand, that could be credit cards, uh, the names and addresses of people that now uh, have uh, millions of uh, potential civil uh, complaints about having identity theft of the uh, crisis of just going through and getting a replacement credit card, of wondering about uh, any uh, charges being made that they have to fight off. And, um, you know, all of that, just you think about it, that suddenly means that that company may have uh, millions of lawsuits. They certainly have some legal liability about how well they store that information. So that's going to continue to increase because a lot of, uh, of these uh, databases that we have are gathering more and more information, which means if it's compromised, brings an increase in liability. Now we also know that uh, when we talk about liability, civil and legal, it doesn't mean just lawsuits but criminal actions as well. Uh, you know we saw a large, um, uh, I guess uh, I will say Enron since they're out of business, uh, some of those people went through legal liability. Legal liability by the way at the top starting with the CEO and all of the rest of the executive management for the way in which they were uh, basically cooking the books about their financials. Um, that again was uh, a way of their destroying or altering information, things that should have been protected, and caused a legal liability, including jail and prison time. Now, the other benefit is uh, that we can have good or try to assure good policy compliance. That means uh, if we have policies and those policies are in place for the purpose of uh, knowing uh, what our goals are for security, but we don't have good management to make sure that we, number one, communicate, train, make people aware, and of course add that top-down effect, then how do we really get good policy compliance? As an example, if you have a policy that says that uh, there's an acceptable use of how I'm going to use email, and I start using your email servers to uh, send uh, spam to people across the world, or maybe uh, enter into inappropriate conversations, the uh, use of it to uh, share company or corporate secrets, but you don't have any uh, actual enforcement of these policies that nobody at the top can really say if you violate it you're, you're going to be terminated. You may even uh, be criminally prosecuted. Then how are you going to really assure that I'm going to be compliant with that policy if there's no enforcement action? Now I realize I'm making this almost a negative connotation but uh, that's you know one aspect of policy compliance. The other is just making sure I know and understand how that policy applies to me. All of that is a part of having good management. That also means that we can uh, reduce, uh, hopefully with good policy or good uh, governance, uh, to reduce the uncertainty of business operations, to uh, be able to optimize the allocations of our limited security resources. I realize that most of us don't have all the money in the world to buy every single type of security assurance uh, control that we could put in there and try to uh, you know, protect everything and make it 100% secure. At some point, I don't want to spend a lot of money um, when there's not a lot of return. So, uh, and I use as an example something way off the board with, with uh, information. But recently, I went down to uh, a, an electronics store to buy a new headset uh, for my computer. And it was a very cheap one. It was $4.99. And when I was at the checkout stand, they asked if I wanted to buy the extra insurance policy, replacement policy. In a way, it was kind of a, a, a control. A, you know, trying to balance uh, the risk. And even though my headset was five bucks, four dollars and ninety-nine cents, I was curious. I was like, okay, how much is this replacement policy? And they said it was simply six dollars and ninety-nine cents. And it would be good for two years. And I'm thinking to myself, at that rate, I could have just bought my own backup headset. So not everything is a good uh, investment, I guess is what I'm trying to say in security. I'm trying to put it into a kind of a different little uh, scenario. So good information security governance should, as I said, help us optimize those resources. It also should help ensure that business decisions are going to be uh, made on that information. 
Now that's an important aspect, right? We want to make sure that uh, when we're looking at our governing um, uh, set of uh, security governance, that our decisions are based on that management of uh, what our programs and policies are going to be. We also want, can see the improving of uh, the competence in the interactions with trading partners. Now that's also a very important aspect because we expect to see the same from them. As an example, if my company's uh, job is to take uh, credit cards from uh, customers for the purchase of goods or services, I'm going to have to communicate with a credit card processing center. They generally have a uh, set of, uh, of uh, policies that we have to adhere to, you know, security audits and make, making uh, certain levels of uh, protections so that they're willing to uh, open up their networks for communications with us. And having good, again, uh, security governance is going to help make that interaction better. Uh, it should also help improve trust and customer relationships. Now, what I mean by that is that um, if, you know, I was that company who had the game console with all those uh, customers' information was uh, taken, I, I don't see a lot of trust uh, that they're going to want to come back and put their new information into that same database. And they may have customers that might not return. But if we show a history of doing good with uh, our security governance, then we're going to get an ongoing feeling of trust and hopefully better customer relationships. That should mean better for the company in the bottom line. And of course, that also is going to help us in safeguarding the company's reputation. Because again, our reputation is very important. Uh, without a good reputation, you don't see a lot of repeat business or even new business. Now, when we talk about the outcomes of our security governance, really, information security governance is designed to include the elements that are required to be able to improve the assurance and the direction of the security posture of the organization. With those elements in place, management should be confident that there's at least adequate and effective information security to protect those assets. Again, for all the reasons we want good governance, we don't want to uh, worry about losing information, about losing our reputation, about civil or, or uh, legal uh, liabilities and the rest of it. Now, the objectives of information security really is to develop and implement uh, and manage the security program to be able to cover some of the following uh, basic outcomes of security governance. Some of those are things like strategic alignment, which is just the alignment of your information security to the business strategy. Now, again, if my company is about making widgets, that's what my security policy has to do is help in supporting the company to being better at making widgets because that's what keeps the company in business not necessarily how well you store the information or how well you transmit the information or keep trade secrets. Those are important aspects, don't get me wrong, but that's not necessarily the profit arm of the company that keeps the uh, company thriving and growing. So we can't uh, sometimes uh, be so secure that we're stifling or affecting the actual uh, goal of the business strategy. Rather, again, we should be supporting it and trying to make the objectives align with each other. Now, with that strategic alignment, hopefully that means your security alignment, uh, requirements are going to be thoroughly developed to give guidance on what should be done. That your security solutions will fit into the culture, the governance style, the technology, and the structure of the organization. And that again, that you're aligned with the enterprise strategy. And that the uh, known threats, vulnerabilities, and risk profile are appropriately uh, looked at and uh, hopefully uh, dealt with or contained. One of the other outcomes of your security governance is risk management. Now, risk management is really the foundation for a lot of the policies and the security programs that you're going to be creating. And uh, we basically want to use appropriate measures to find ways to reduce risk and the potential impacts on information. Now, notice I said the reduction and not the complete elimination. Again, we cannot completely eliminate risk, um, but we can try to reduce that risk to an acceptable level. We'll get to talk more about that as we move into the actual development process. But in order to have risk management, you need to first of all understand what are the threats and vulnerabilities. I mean, if you don't know what the threats or the vulnerabilities are, then how do you really even know there's risk? Uh, and, and that's an important aspect. And remember that even though we're talking about information security, a lot of us begin to think about hackers and firewalls and things like that. But you know, other threats to our information, to our security, can come from natural disasters, from the failure of equipment, uh, to uh, you know, th uh, theft, and uh, maybe even accidental acts, uh, actions upon the uh, parts of our employees. That just means we need to really understand what those threats and vulnerabilities are so that we can appropriately manage that risk. 
We also need to know what the uh, risk exposure and consequences would be of compromise. In other words, if there was a fire in that building, what is that exposure? What are the, uh, uh, the powers of be that look historically at the structures, the types of fires? What would they tell you would be uh, the amount of damage? Would the entire building be a loss? Through, uh, you know, would there be maybe just uh, some parts of the buildings that are um, uninhabitable? You know, we under need to understand what that exposure is. And, of course, what does that mean to us? What's the consequence of that compromise? Now, we need to have an awareness of risk uh, and have uh, really a series of priorities. Because every aspect of information can be at risk, but some information obviously is more important than others. And some loss of information... Um, you know, could be uh, the type of loss that is um, going to affect the dependencies of uh, many other processes and could have a really large cascading uh, effect. So we really want to look at the prioritizations and how they interact. That goal of risk management, of course, as I said, is to reduce risk to an acceptable level. And risk um, acceptance uh, really is uh, based on uh, an understanding of the potential consequences of having that uh, residual risk. And that's uh, uh, kind of the goal, is we're trying to reduce it down to that acceptable level um, and, and uh, be able to say, okay, now that we've got a lot of that taken care of, what we have left may be more manageable. Now, as we still talk about the outcomes of having information security governance, one of the other outcomes is a value delivery, which is the optimizing uh, your security investments to help support, again, the business objectives. That means uh, we want to include a set of security practices or baseline security requirements. Now, a baseline, and a lot of this you have to remember, again, as we introduce this domain, is an overview of what we're going to be seeing in more detail. But a baseline can often be thought of as that minimum security that we need. Now, um, that's a part of the security practices, understanding those minimums. doesn't mean we have to strive for the minimum, uh, but it might be a good baseline where we can grow from. Now, prioritizing the efforts uh, to the areas with the greatest impact uh, and the, biz, the best business benefit. That's another part of the value delivery. Uh, again, there are going to be some assets that are more important to us, and we need to think about those usually at the top of the list of trying to take uh, out security governance rather than worrying about um, whether or not uh, people are taking pencils from the closets in our office. Um, using a standards-based solution uh, is another value added, especially standards-based because uh, that helps us with uh, interoperability between different vendors or even with different organizations. Having complete uh, solutions covering the process as well as the technology of the business organization and knowing that security is thought of as a process and not just a single event. Your resource management is another outcome of your information security governance uh, and that is using the information security knowledge and infrastructure in a way that's efficient and effective. And it is important to understand because resources is not, more, not just monetary. It's also on personnel of the environment, uh, of the culture of the company. And it's important that we understand what our resources are, manage them well to get the most out of them. We want to make sure that uh, basically, you know, that the knowledge is captured and available. Now, that's one of the biggest things of our resource management is that the knowledge is the data. We want to be, make sure that we have it and that it is not you know, so unavailable or locked up under security that it's not useful. We uh, can use the resources to help us maybe document security processes and practices to understand how those resources are being used, uh, to be able to create a security architecture to define and utilize the infrastructure resources to the best of their ability. Another outcome is the performance measurement. Now, performance measurement is an important part of this, monitoring, reporting on information security processes, Number one, to make sure that your objectives are being achieved. Now, having a set of metrics should also be aligned with the, with the objectives. In other words, they need to be meaningful metrics or uh, parts of uh, the security process that we're monitoring. We want to be able to find shortcomings, to get feedback to, so we can see process improvement. And, of course, we may have uh, to consider having external audits to help confirm what we would call our security assertions. In other words, if we uh, think that we have a firewall that's doing what it's supposed to be doing, uh, having an external audit can actually let us know if the logic of our security policies are working. Does that firewall actually block the traffic we asserted that it would? Does it stop the type of attacks or mitigate them the way we assert that they would? A lot of that comes through uh, independent testing. One of the last outcomes that we look for in information security is the integration. 
Now, integration means that we are going to integrate all relevance assurance factors to make sure that the processes are basically operating as they are intended. Now, what does that mean, integration? Well, that means that we need to look at all of the organizational assurance functions. When you think about a business as a whole, uh, it's not just information technology. I mean, sure, that's our kind of our focus with information security. But, you know, we are supporting other business units and they may have their own set of policies with regards to information, how they retrieve it, how they enter it, how they interact with, uh, with IT. Uh, and so that's another part of the, uh, of the integration is to uh, make sure that it's uh, pretty much working with all of the organizational assurance functions of the different business units. That means we want to coordinate the assurance functions for complete security. I don't necessarily need to have, you know, you do your security, I do my security. Because, you know, without that integration, there could be gaps or lapses in between those boundaries of uh, what you're doing and what I'm doing, rather than what can we do together to uh, come up with a better solution. That means we should have some overlapping roles and responsibilities. And we want to look at it as a, as a systems approach to security planning, the development and the management, rather than, again, just doing a kind of an isolationist point of view.